All right, so I want to talk about another Cordova plugin. This one is for local notifications. Now, there's a couple variations of this plugin, and I'm going to jump over to the browser here. This version of the plugin is the one that I typically install. Now, this plugin belongs to uh, a specific user, but um, this one, Katzer, this is the user right here, Sebastian Katzer. He is the one that uh, is doing the majority of the maintaining of this one. So this version, Cordova Plugin Local Notifications, and this one, DE Applin, Cordova Plugin Local Notification, they're pretty much the same thing. Uh, now, there are different versions of this. If you're building for iOS, currently I would recommend that you use the version 0 0.8 something. Uh, if you're building for the newer Android, then I'd recommend going over to Katzer's um, other one. The default one that you see on the home page here, the master branch, this is actually version 0 0.9. Now, the documentation that you'll see here, if you look very closely down here, you'll see that this is 0.9.0-beta. Now, that is the version that I would use if I'm going to build this for a current Android project. Um, now, the code that you would use, all this documentation in the README file, all of this stuff that you have in here, this all pertains to the new one, the version 0 0.9. The 0 0.8 actually has different script. So for this one, we'd go into the wiki. And over here, this is the wiki. Here's the documentation that you will find all about this. This is what I'm going to be talking about is the 0 0.8 version of it. Once you understand this, then it's quite a simple matter to change your commands. There's a handful of commands that'll change. There's some of the properties that you would pass into the objects when you're creating these notifications that you can just look at the homepage documentation here and you can see the new versions and how things have changed. All right, so local notifications, what are they? Well, when you have in your app a little notification that pops up, so you're running the app or the app is running in the background or the app is shut down and you get a notification that pops up to say, hey, something has happened or here's a timer that's gone off and you need to look at the app, you need to respond to this, you've received a new message, something like that. The notification that appears inside of the mobile device, that is the local notification. Now, this is just the mechanism for showing these notifications. This is not the push notifications that come from the server. So that's something completely different. This is just within the app. You can set up these notifications. You can talk to a server with fetch, get some data, set up some notifications that are going to go later, um, put something in local storage that's going to be displayed later. That's what local notifications are all about. So in our Cordova project, so I've created one here. I'm going to put a copy of this index.js file up as a code just that you can download and put into your project. Uh, my HTML file, all I have inside of here is just a button to click so I can create a notification. That's all that I'm doing inside of here. Notes that I've got at the top here, I have the links to those three pages. So here's the home page for the Katzer's version of the local notification plugin. This is the one where the README file talks about the version 0 0.9 beta. That's the one for the new Android. The wiki is the reference for the old ones. And this is the easiest one that I found to install. Now you can install this default one from this reference. If you install this, it's going to go off and install this deapplant one anyway. So just go to this one, install the deapplant one. I'm going to zoom in the code a little bit here and close this. There we go. Make that a little bit easier to see. So this is the one that I'll install. And here's the command to add it to your project. When I'm building for iOS, this is just a side note. I'll get to this in a little bit. Um, the later versions, version 10 of Xcode. If you're going to be building this for iOS, this is sort of a side note. Um, when you try to emulate for iOS, build for iOS, run on an iOS device, um, if it's an emulator, you should specify the target. So you can get a list of these with through iOS SIM. Um, but you should also add this build flag. If you've got the latest version of Xcode, it doesn't work that well with 
this plugin with Cordova currently. So add this flag when you emulate or run or build, and this will skip over the problems that exist with the latest version of Xcode. And uh, just a quick link to, this is the other plugin that I've got here. Now it links to this page right here in the Cordova documentation, one of the core built-in plugins dialogues. This just has to do with alert, confirm, prompt, and beep. So being able to display notification when your app is running, you get the little pop-up alert box that you would in the browser. This just displays the sort of native version of that. So we can do alert, confirm, prompt, or beep. Those are the four methods. Alert is the only one that I'm using in my code, but I have the link here so that you can do the download, do the install, and use it in your project. Okay, so my script for my app. It is just a default Cordova app. So I've got my app object, my init method. I'm listening for device ready. When that fires, I'm going to call my ready function. That's going to add listeners. And these are just listeners for the um, local notification plugin. So we can do on click, we can do on trigger. The click doesn't have to do with anything that's in the interface. This is when the notification pops up and appears to the user. If you want them to click on the notification and then have something happen in your app, that's what this does. This is listening for a, a tap, a click on the notification itself when it appears on the device. I'm just using the alert to say that yes, okay, the ID of the notification that the user clicked on, that's what I'm writing out. But we have this notification object, which will be all of the properties, all the information about that notification will be available to us. Okay, uh, for trigger, this is not when the user clicks on it, but when the notification is triggered to be displayed on the mobile device. That's what we have here. All right, add note. This is the one that's going to fire when the user clicks on this button in my interface. So I have a click listener in my code where I'm saying, if, if somebody clicks on this, I'm going to create a notification and add it to the system. Okay, so back in add note. Uh, right here, get defaults. Because there are the different versions of the plugin, the version 8, the version 9, or 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and they have different uh, properties to them, I find that this is a good way to find out what are the properties that are available in your script. So we can call this get default. It will give us sort of a sample version of one of the notification objects. And in mine right now, these are the ones that are available to me. So there's an ID property, there's a text property, there's a title property. These are really the two lines of text that'll appear in the notification. Title will be the top one. It'll be displayed a little bit larger. Text will be a little bit smaller. It'll be below the title. If you don't specify a title, uh, the default on iOS, I believe, is just the name of the application. Uh, every and at. This is the time. So I want to trigger a notification once an hour, once a day, once a week, once a month, or at a specific time and date. So those are your two times for when you want to schedule a notification to go off. Data is data that you can save as part of the local, local notification so that when it triggers and you have your script that runs on trigger or on click, you can get the data that you saved with it. So maybe there's information about an event that you can then display inside your application. All right, creating the notification. Uh, what I'm going to do is I just set up a time that was one minute in the future from right now. I take my new date object and I'm going to update the minutes to get minutes plus one. So one minute in the future. And then the ID, all of your notifications should have a unique ID. My ID is I'm just going to grab a new date object and get, I'm going to get the milliseconds. So this is a number between 0 and 999. Fairly unique value. It's not guaranteed to be unique, but for my purposes, for what I'm doing, that's more than unique enough. All right, so I've created this object called Note Options. Inside of here, I've got the ID, which is the milliseconds. I've got a title. I've got some text. 
at, this is my date object. This can be a date object or it can just be a timestamp. So the numerical timestamp. Badge, this will be the little round circle with the number inside of it that appears on your app icon to say, hey, you've got a notification. So I'm putting that number inside there. And this is the date or the data object that I'm creating and saving as part of it. Now, that props object that I created above here, right here, this is how I would check to see if other properties are available to me. So I can say if props.icon, this is only available on the Android side. So if that's available, I'm going to take this PNG and save it in my note options under this property name, LED. Again, something that's available on Android. I can set the color for the little blinking LED actions. This will be to be able to add uh, multiple buttons. When the notification appears, I can have a yes or a no or other sort of uh, labels, which are buttons that the user can click on. We can then receive these as events. When the person clicks on it, we know which button they've clicked on. All right, so those are the ones. If you wanted to add notifications, we can do that. Uh, sorry, the additional properties to the notification. Then we have the schedule method right here. So the schedule method takes this note options object that we created with all this information and the at time inside there. That's what's being used by the scheduled local notification to know when to trigger. The next line here, my alert, this is just for me, for myself. When the app is running, I can tell, hey, okay, yeah, we got to this point of code and the notification was created and that's the ID of the notification. Um, these are just samples of other things we can do. There's cancel, there's clear. Uh, clear is if a notification has been triggered, you want to just dispose of it. Cancel is it hasn't been triggered yet and I want to get rid of it. So we pass in the ID and then the callback function. The cancel method itself will do the canceling, getting rid of it, but the function, if you need to do something else at that point, this is where you do it. Uh, there's a few other methods as well. We can use is present. Basically, this is if a notification exists. Um, there's is present, is triggered, is scheduled. Is scheduled, it hasn't happened yet, but it is scheduled to happen in the future. Is triggered, it has already been triggered. Is present, is it's either one of those. Then we've got get all IDs or scheduled or triggered IDs. This will just give us an array of the IDs, those numbers that we pass in here. If you don't have one inside of your op options object, if you didn't create an ID there, the default value for this will be zero. And if you create or schedule a notification with the same number with zero, you're going to overwrite the old one with the number zero, or if you use the same ID for multiple ones, you're just going to be overwriting the old ones when you schedule it. Uh, so let's get all IDs, get scheduled, get triggered IDs, or if you want the notifications, get will let us pass in an ID and it will get one notification. Get all means get all of them that exist. I'll have an array of the notifications, not just an array of the IDs, but of all the notification objects. And then you can define if you want to get the triggered ones, the scheduled ones, or all of them. Okay, so that's everything there. Um, now I'm going to build this project and we're going to run it on the iPhone 8 with iOS 12 simulator. So I have this simulator right here. You can see this is it running before. Um, I can get rid of this. There we go. We'll delete that so it's gone from our simulator. It's no longer part of that. When I run this command again, it will build our project using the appropriate version of iOS. Build succeeded. It closes the simulator and now it will reopen that same simulator, the one that I specified in the target. This will launch and then our application will launch with the button inside of there that we can click on to create this notification. And um, there we go. So launched add notification. Uh, the very first time that you run the application on the iOS, it's going to confirm, it's going to have the user confirm that they want this app to be able to set local notifications. So yes, I'm going to go ahead and say that. 
There we go. It created the local notification. Okay. And this will, for one minute in the future, set this notification. So through the magic of editing, I'm going to, <clears throat> pardon me, jump ahead to that point. I will close my app. There we go. There we are. So it's shut down completely. And then I will just jump ahead to the point where it's going to go off. And there we have it. There's the notification going off. There's the title. There's the text. Now, I didn't interact with it. I didn't click on it. My app is shut down, so I'm not getting the trigger script that's running uh, because this isn't open. But when I click on it, so if I open this up, there it is. I click on this. I can now click this open button, and that will go into my app, and it will trigger my clicked notification. There we are. So that is the callback function from up here, this click one. The trigger, I didn't get to run, but the click, I did. If the app was open, then I would see this. So back inside of here, if we close this, or actually, sorry, let's go back into it. Click this to set another one. Now, my app is still running. It's just in the background. Or I can have it open. It's going to do the same thing here. If the app is running, I will get the trigger as well as the click. So again, I'll jump forward in time here through the magic of editing, and then we'll see the notification go off. And there we have it. So the triggered came up. We're good with that. And I just missed it there. And there's the clicked. So both of these events triggered, and we were able to run them inside the app. And that's it. That's local notifications. That's how the scripts work. Uh, there is an update method. Uh, I found that it's not always predictable. It's better if you take a scheduled notification and you cancel it and then create a new one. If you if you want to update something about it, it doesn't always um, let you change all the properties in the object. So it's much better for you, for your app, if you just cancel the old one and create a new one. You can read the properties about the old one, get that information, change it however you want, and then create a new notification. All right, so I hope that helps you understand the local notifications and how that works. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I will leave a link to the code just for this code inside the description. And as always, thanks for watching.